deep in Sudan's gold country. Miners toil in the searing heat, barely surviving in what should be one of Africa's richest countries, providing gold for a war a continent away. We investigate a force more powerful than Sudan's government controlling its gold, subverting Sudan's destiny, threatening me and our sources, and thwarting democracy to evade sanctions in Russia's war on Ukraine. Russian manager's on his way, they say. We uncover the extent of Russia's grip on Sudan. For millennia, Sudan has produced some of the most sought-after gold in the world. And Putin's private army, the notorious paramilitary group Wagner, knows it. Sudan's government is denying Wagner's existence in country, but we're not buying it. And we've come to investigate. Wagner's tentacles stretch right across Africa. We've discovered some of its most notorious operatives are working on Sudan. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of Wagner, Mikhail Potopkin, Prigozhin's head of Sudan Ops, and Alexander Sergeyevich Kuznetsov, Wagner's key enforcer, previously convicted of kidnap and robbery. Working with this man, Sudanese General Mohammed Hamdan Degalo, aka Hemeti, in a quid pro quo for training and weaponry. We travel 200 miles north from the capital Khartoum to gold country to take a closer look at Wagner's main moneymaker, artisanal gold. Miners bring rocks they extract here to be processed. 85% of Sudan's gold is produced artisanally. This right here, it may not look like much. This is what's left after the the rocks that the miners have brought in is milled. Now, they've taken what they can out of it, but this gets sold. And when it's properly processed with someone who has superior technology, you can make 10 times what those miners over there are making. 10 times more money without any of the backbreaking work. And the only foreign processing plant operational in Sudan is Wagner's Medawi Gold, despite a Sudanese law limiting ownership to locals. Also troubling, Medawi Gold was sanctioned two years ago by the United States for exploiting Sudan's natural resources and spreading their malign influence around the globe. According to the Sudanese government, they officially ceased operations, but they are still here still evading sanctions. We verified their location with coordinates provided by Sudanese anti-corruption investigators and head there to see for ourselves. As we approach, the red flag of the former Soviet Union blows in the wind. Increasingly used by Russian nationalists, it brazenly marks the Medawi Gold compound. A Russian tanker sits next to it. We get to the entrance and decide to ask a few questions but not before we turn on our covert cameras. Hi. Well, that's convenient. They've just confirmed the Russians are at this location. There's a black pickup approaching. OK, tamam. Guards just confirmed that the Russian manager's in that black pickup and is on his way to us. A Russian van races to the office, but no one seems to be coming over. Seems the Russian manager has changed his mind. But others turn up instead. They claim this plant is Sudanese owned and is called Al Solaj. Remember that name, it's important. Al Solaj. We head off the property to do some more filming, but we're followed. Security approaches. They want us to stop. This is public ground. This is public ground. Why is your berm stopping here? Trying to get us to move on. They're taking pictures of us, of our license plates. The reason they're so nervous, Al Solaj is a front for the Russian company Meroi Gold. Wagner is still operating illegally. A foreign company pretending to be Sudanese to evade US sanctions. 
we obtain their registration documents to prove it. The document on the left is from Meadowy Gold, the one on the right, El Solaj. These dates represent complaints made in employment courts against Meadowy Gold. These ones from El Solaj are the same. Under Sudanese law, when a company's holdings are transferred, so are any judgments against it. Here you can see the judgments against both companies are identical. All they've done is change the name. Wagner, hiding in plain sight to avoid US sanctions and keep the financial pipeline flowing back to Moscow and its war on Ukraine. A dangerous business to delve into. Since we've arrived in country, I've been informed by sources of threats that they believe to be credible against me. They say that's what happens here when you look too closely at Russia's business dealings. We're off to meet one of those sources, and he's asked that I come alone. Mirowe Gold is a front for the Russians, specifically for the forces of Wagner that are working to exploit gold in Sudan and its export. It's a front, it's not a company. It extracts gold from tailings and it buys gold from the Sudanese artisanal miners. That's not legal, because the law says that any gold producer is supposed to report the quantity it produces to the central bank and to the Ministry of Mining, and that does not happen. Inside Sudan's central bank, a whistleblower snapped this photo of a computer screen, showing official production in 2021 at 49.7 tons. 32.7 tons are unaccounted for by the central bank. But the real figure, we're told by whistleblowers, could be over 220 tons. That's around $13.4 billion worth of gold a year that's being stolen from Sudan. How has this happened? Two years ago, the Sudanese people successfully overthrew Africa's second longest ruling dictator, Omar al-Bashir. 18 months later, the military staged its own coup, sweeping aside civilian rule. And they did this, we're told, with Wagner's support in exchange for gold. This man had a front row seat to Russia's machinations and has evidence to prove it stood to gain by supporting the Sudanese military's coup. Under threat of assassination, he's been in hiding for the last nine months, moving from safe house to safe house. The Russians and Sudanese officers saw the civilians and the government as an obstacle to their plan. The official anti-corruption task force wasn't caving to pressure or threats or even bribery. The armed forces were found to be complicit in the smuggling of gold by the Russians, and it was raised with them. Do you blame Russia for the death of democracy here in Sudan? Definitely. Russia carries the majority of the blame for the stillbirthing of Sudan's democracy. Just days later, his nephew was killed by state actors trying to stop a pro-democracy demonstration. In the two weeks we've been in Sudan investigating Russia's illegal gold mining, 10 people were killed protesting for change. It's not just on the battlefields of Ukraine that Russia is spilling blood. Here too, there is a human cost. The cost of Russia's support of Sudan's generals in return for its gold. Ni'mal Bagr CNN, Khartoum, Sudan.